So there's this thing that I've always done basically my entire life, even as a little kid, I would just like have this desire to draw, but I would feel overwhelmed by the blank page or just like not have any ideas for what to draw. What I would do is just kind of draw something small on the page and then draw something next to it that sort of, you know, worked within the space from the first thing and then just keep filling the page until it was completely full and forcing myself to make things that would fit into the negative spaces that were left over. And this would make me think of things differently and like draw things differently because I would be forced to make them work in the confines of like a, a particular space. I try to make it fun, keep it loose, keep it playful. So in this video, we are just gonna start with a blank page and just fill it up uh, as fast as I can. There's probably gonna be lots of stupid jokes. Hopefully you're here for that. Let's head over to my iPad and fill up a page with some random stuff. For me, the hardest part is usually just picking a spot to start. What I like to do is just kind of go for like the edge. For some reason, I find that a little less overwhelming than just the center of a full page because that way I can sort of, I don't know, just work something in at the edge and then go back in and kind of work my way around it. This is something that I started doing at like an early age when I had this like intense desire to draw all the time, but like I felt overwhelmed about what I would even draw. So I've discovered that if I just drew something small, I could just get started and then sort of build from there, knowing that if I just made lots of little things, it would be way less, there'd be way less pressure than just like making one good thing. There'd be lots of things to look at. And, you know, I don't know if that is, I don't know what I'm saying. I already lost track. We just started. I do find that I like to incorporate words and usually sort of like nonsense and things like no, or just sort of silly. And I'm moving this over because I said I wasn't gonna sketch, I was just gonna go right in. And technically I think this is not cheating. I just wanna do like a, a 3D effect on this no lettering. And it wasn't going to be possible given how close it was to that weird face. I don't know what it is about things like no or just like, I don't know, little sayings. I just like to incorporate them. I think part of it is just because I like to draw letters. And then it's also just because, I don't know, I like it to be funny and things like just putting the word no in a drawing makes me laugh. I don't know if it's funny to anyone else, but for me, it's, it's something. Another thing I often do is draw like crossed fingers as like a sign for, you know, good luck, like wanting, is it, is it good luck? Or it's like, oh, I'm gonna keep my fingers crossed. I don't know. Something about that visual is funny to me. It's like, oh, I got my fingers crossed because he's worried. But like, what is he crossing his fingers about? He's this like weird character over here. The other thing is, I think we're going a little too big already. Let's go a little bit smaller. I know I said I'm winging this, but um, I don't know. Let's uh, Let's put a robot down here. I'm gonna start with the eyes, I think. Yeah, we'll do the eyes. And then like, make a square head. I think maybe the eyes can have like a protruding look, if you will. Maybe we can put some like, eyeballs inside. I think we're gonna have to do a little mouth because we're taking up all the space with the eyes. And when I'm trying to fill a spot, I really like to use like all the areas and like work things in. So like putting these little antennas like into that negative space is something I really like to do. So let's uh Okay, that's a robot, not gonna overthink it. 
maybe, uh, I don't know. Let's draw a hot dog. I don't know why. I think hot dogs are another one of those things that are funny. So when I'm trying to get out of my own head and like make something like this, I'd really lean on humor quite a bit. Because I think when you're not taking yourself too seriously, you can have more fun. And I think having more fun leads to less overthinking what you're doing. I think I'm going to make this hot dog have a face and have it be sad because the idea of a hot dog that's also sad and has a face is hilarious to me and I don't know why. Do you think that's funny and you understand that humor? Well, let me know in the comments because uh, I don't know. Maybe we can have like a, a speech bubble for the hot dog to go in this negative space. I don't know what it's going to say, but we can figure that out later. And maybe it's a thought bubble instead of a speech bubble because he's sad. So he's just, he's in deep thought. All right. Um, maybe we can do some more lettering. Maybe. Oh, I know. You know that uh, phrase, hot girl summer? What if we do hot dog summer? <laughs> so, you know, don't be afraid to get silly. Especially when you're doing something like this and you're trying to like get out of your own head and not overthink things. And while I'm just doing random things like this, I'm really trying to like use the space because I think part of what I like about doing these improvised doodles is like filling the space and like using as much of it as I can and just having it all be tightly locked together. Doing script like this would probably be beneficial or, or just lettering in general to sketch a little bit, but um, I don't know. I said we weren't going to do that, so we're just going to hope for the best. That worked out okay. I think one thing that bugs me about this G is it looks a little cramped uh, compared to the other letters, so maybe we can have it overlap on top of the, the O. that maybe to make it match we can do like a little bit of a like a 3d drop shadow thing on these letters just so that um, that filled in area on the G doesn't look out of place okay I think that's okay that's that's fine um, I don't know maybe uh, maybe we need to start on this side over here. <laughs> One thing that I come back to a lot is these like weird, um, I don't know what to call them. They're like just little monsters, sort of like ghosts, but I just like drawing them, especially when I'm doing something like this because I can make them bend into different spaces. And as I mentioned, I really like to fill in like the gaps. So generally these things are great when I have weird spaces to fill, but now I'm like going right in and doing it when there's nothing else around. So maybe I'll regret that later, but we can always add in more of them. Put some big teeth. Maybe we'll just do little dot eyes on this one. Like that. And then uh, sometimes they have legs, sometimes they don't. I think this one could use some little feet that are just up like this. <laughs> kind of goes with this a goofy look. Um, I don't know. Maybe we can do a face situation. Like a big mouth face. Maybe some... Maybe it's like a, a frog looking character. 
with some big eyes. Oops. Oh, we got a little extra dot there. Okay. Big eye like that. Look into the side. Maybe it's not a frog. Maybe it's got like a nose like that. And then just like a big wide open mouth with fangs. So maybe it's a monster. Okay, well, that's fine. What if um, we do an actual frog? But it's like a frog that's walking around on its hind legs, if you will. I think we uh, ran out of space for its other leg, so let's um, let's move it. This is something that I could not do when I was a little kid because I just had uh, one sheet of paper that I was dealing with. You know what I think we need to do is erase this um, back leg now that we're moving the body and then um, we can let it be lower in the frame or composition. I think tipped it back a little bit so it's got that like swaggy walk. You know what I'm saying? Okay, like that. And then we can do this like outstretched leg like this. You know that walk where it's just like your leg is super <laughs> extended. I think that's kind of funny. Then maybe we can just do some arms and hands like that and put the other one in like this. <laughs> I don't know if this is a frog, but it's sort of frog inspired, but that's the thing. It doesn't matter. You can do whatever you want. We're just making it up. We're getting out of our own head. We're having a good time. I think Are we having a good time. It's kind of silly. All right. Um, maybe we'll do some more lettering. What about like, Oh, like, oh, oh, <laughs> so I'm just like curving these letters to fill the negative space. And then maybe we could do like that 3D ish thing to use some more space. Basically, I'm just filling as much space as I can. <laughs> Um, now we got this little weird space down here. Maybe this monster thing is like pointing to the bummer lettering. Okay. If that's okay. Maybe we'll do like a, a big face up here with like a bunch of eyeballs or something. So. We'll go to like real big face. Maybe this can be sort of like a focal point in the composition. And the chin, come over here. This might be a little too big. I think I'll just draw this in and then see. It's a little big. Let's make it a little bit smaller. Just so there's a little bit more breathing room there and we can kind of make them fit together a little bit better all right so we want a, a lot of eyes here so i'm going to start with the mouth and then build in the eyes around that so maybe we'll do a smile like this so that we can have those like cheek lines because those are a good spot to build eyes onto. So we can start with like those normal eyes and then maybe we can build some eyes next to that like this. Then maybe like a big one up here. Close 
So this end, maybe a little up there. Maybe we could do like two more up here. Again, using that modifier to erase the stuff we don't need using the same brush. We put like a big nose that overlaps the mouth. It's kind of fun. Put some teeth in. A little tongue action, if you will. If you will. What does that even mean? What am I talking about here? All right, so now we got all these eyes, so maybe they can be looking different directions to make it look a little sillier. That's a, a silly face. I think I don't love the way the head fits around the eyes, so I think I'm going to try to change that. We'll do this side first to see if we like it as a test. I'm thinking if we do something like this, it's like the eye is bulging out, and then like pull the head a little bit wider, then we can have some, I don't know, little details like that. And I think that looks better. Okay. Maybe we can have some sort of like creature that's like wrapping around this space. And it's, I don't know, maybe its legs can come back here. We can put the other one like that. I don't know what this, uh, this creature is, but we're trying to use the space that we have. And that's sort of a way that this can help you be more creative because it'll like force you to draw things that you wouldn't normally think to draw because you're trying to like make something that fits a particular space within your composition. And I'm just, I don't know, I'm just going for it. This is a nose, by the way. It's a little bit like a heart. Maybe this thing is looking back at the monster with the crazy eyes. Kind of looks like a, a happy look though. Maybe they're friends. Kind of some wacky teeth here. Oh, you know what we can do? We can, um, since we've got this extra space, maybe we can have like a, a weird tongue. It's not even a weird tongue, but just like a, a tongue sticking out to go into that negative space. Just make it feel a little more tied together. Well, maybe we can put some spots on this thing. The other thing about drawing something like this, where you have all these things, is like, this creature, I don't like this drawing much at all on its own, but as part of a whole thing, it's okay. I wouldn't just draw that thing and call it a decent drawing, because it's not. <laughs> uh, let's see, maybe we'll just make a face that fits in this spot, so I'm really just sort of tracing this area and then I don't know let's uh put a nose mouth situation 
I think I probably used too thick of a brush for this uh, drawing, but I don't know. I think it gives it kind of a fun look. Almost like a drawing with a Sharpie, which is something that I used to do quite a bit. So much so that I tattooed it on my arm. cloud face. It's another one of my go-to's. I don't really know why. I just like to draw clouds with faces. Especially clouds with like a startled face. I think that's funny. Like big eyes. And then like, oh, oh. So I like uh, that home improvement guy for a second there. Um, do a little, little circle up here and just write OK. Because, I don't know. OK. And because it's a cloud, maybe we can make some squiggly lines and connect it like it's a, a rainbow. Maybe we can have a... It's too big. A speech bubble for this little guy down here. And then we can have rainbow lines connect to that as well. Always love a good squiggly line. Maybe this one says IDK. I don't know. Because really, I don't know. Maybe this, there can be a lightning bolt coming out because it's a cloud. So there's a lot of versatility when you're doing a cloud. It sort of matches the look. I feel like now that I see the frog with the lightning bolt, it's a little bit of apprehension. Have some little uh, eee! action sweat lines. Maybe it's rain bouncing off. Who knows? Lots of options there. Um, okay, we got some space over here. We can do uh, maybe we'll just, just do like a little uh, little plant. Uh, why not? Do like a little pot like this. Cool thing about plants is you can sort of make them grow to fit your negative spaces like this. Put these little flowers in the spaces that we need. Look at that. We go wherever we want. Because we're in charge. <laughs> right. And then maybe... We can put some like uh, action lines coming off hot. Just wrap things up and finish these things up. Maybe they have some motion lines coming off of this guy. It looks like he could be a little bit mad. Maybe little zappies coming off these robot antennas. Can fill this in black to emphasize the eyeball a little bit. Maybe we could try having some lines 
on the sides of the eyes, just to add a little bit of detail. A little, no, I don't like that line. Okay. Um, mostly fine. I think um, we should put something over here. Like, I don't know. Maybe some more lettering. Maybe like the word real. <laughs> I don't know. Just the idea of a bunch of nonsense and then like the word real. Like this is this is real. Listen, we're not overthinking things. We're having fun. We're trying to make ourselves laugh. And that's like what you do to get out of your own head and just try to have some fun. So I'm, you know, breaking rules here by having the lettering stack, but then also not stack. <laughs> and maybe we can uh, put like a, a question mark going the other way. Maybe some little dirt getting kicked up from this foot, from this frog walking. And then... I think the real also goes with the I don't know. Like, it's a question that's being asked in here. It's like, is this real? I don't know. I don't know. Is it, is it real? Um, because this thing, monster thing is kind of like diving, maybe we can just have some like motion lines for the feet to sort of accentuate that movement, but also use that negative space. Do some motion lines like that. And then this thing up here, you could just do some little action line type situation, maybe a little spit, spittle. And then I think all we really need to do now is, well, I think this is looking a little busy because we didn't, fill that in and it's a little tight. I think we just need to put something in the hot dog's thoughts and I don't know, maybe it is a heart, a broken heart. And that's why he's sad. Someone broke the hot dog's heart. Sometimes when I finish with something like this, I'll just sort of forget about it and move along. Or other times, maybe I'll be into how it turned out and want to make like a tighter version from it. And then maybe I'll use what I just did as a sketch and make it even tighter. Or I'll just keep it as like a reference. And then when I'm trying to come up with something in the future, maybe I'll find some elements within that composition that I can carry over into something else. These sort of become like a little visual library or basically just a tool to get out of your own head. You can use them any way you want to. Hopefully you find this helpful. I hope maybe you try this out and maybe it gets you out of a creative funk if you are in one of those. Don't forget that I do live streams every Friday morning at 10.30 Eastern. Come hang out. Okay, good talk.